unanimity is that inequality is a terrible thing. It's terrible not just because it shuts off opportunity for those who are poor, it also creates all kinds of political upheavals. And in this grand narrative, there are many authors who point to this fracturing of society and say that this is what's led to an electoral victory for Donald Trump. That this unhappiness is what's led to Brexit. That this unhappiness is what's led to the rise of extremism across many parts of the world. That is the grand narrative. And in that grand narrative, there's a very clear enemy, inequality. My research is about countering that grand narrative. My research uncovers evidence that says inequality is not the root cause of all of these things that we see. In the United States, inequality has over the last three, four decades risen threefold. In the United States, poor people, people at the bottom of 50% of the income distribution, today they are poorer than they were in 2000. Let's take an, another extreme example, China. In China, inequality, the difference between the very rich and the very poor has increased tenfold, even more than the United States. However, if you look at the bottom 50% of the income distribution, the average income there has increased three times. So inequality in China is high and rising, but it has not suffered from a lack of mobility. Now it turns out that in 80%, four-fifths of the examples that I've studied, inequality, when it rises, comes hand in hand with strong social mobility upwards. In other words, 80% of the world looks a lot more like China than it does look like the United States. The great majority of cases where inequality rises, the poor are also lifted. We shouldn't be looking at just inequality as a sufficient statistic. And the example I use is the United States in the late 1990s and early 2000s. There, there was a recognition that inequality was a growing problem. But what America did was they tried to treat the symptoms. They said we can make society less unequal by allowing the poor to buy big houses. So they deployed something called the Community Reinvestment Act to furnish generous mortgage lending to the poor. They relaxed credit restrictions and they allowed banking, the financial service industry, also to provide cheap loans to the poor. We now look back at that and we say those are subprime mortgage loans. The availability of cheap credit created the massive housing bubble that when it imploded, caused the global financial crisis. This is a profound disaster in public policy. It's a hugely important case study that we need to remember going forwards. Inequality is not the enemy. We need to treat something deeper. I think where we start is at the level of the individual. Make sure that individuals in our societies have a sense that they have a future going forwards that there are multiple pathways by which they can achieve economic prosperity. And we need to combat misinformation. We need to take the examples that we see around the world where inequality is actually not in a terrible state. Mobility is high, but somehow people have become convinced that society doesn't work for them. We've got to be very vigilant that that kind of misinformation does not become pervasive.